Hi guys, my name is Evangelion, and a few days ago, my little brother wanted me to download a game called The Long Drive. And at first, I was kind of skeptical about this game. I was like, the quality doesn't look too good, it looks like a simple-ish game, you know, but hey, if he wants to try it out, you know, why not, get, why not let him try it out? So I got it. But after about 1,274 kilometers, I understood why people like this game and how simplicity can actually be a whole lot of fun. And along this long ass journey, I've learned many things and I want to help you guys kickstart your long journey. So without further ado, let's begin. So before you can drive, let's find out why you want to endure this long journey. And spoiler alert, this long journey is about 5,000 kilometers. So if you come out the house and check out in this mailbox, there is a small little piece of paper in which it is a letter from your mom telling you to come and visit her. And this is pretty cool. So now you know why you know, you're going to endure this long journey. But how are you going to do this? Well, inside the house, you have two options. First up is your vehicle, which is honestly the best option because it's the fastest. But around back you also have the bike which you have to repair but you have all the parts necessary for it inside the house but we're gonna stick with the car because it's faster it's more reliable and all that stuff speaking of cars inside the house every 10 minutes you have a chance of a whole entire different car spawning so for example right now if I keep if I were to keep on resetting my save this is the car that would spawn. Whereas, let's say, after 10 minutes, I might have a Volkswagen Beetle spawn in, or a minivan, or a sedan. There's a whole bunch of cars. But along that, there's also a whole bunch of engines. As you can see, this is how my engine lo looks like. And I also have a hella rusty coolant. So, about these cars, you have to know two things. One, what engine do they have? Do they have a coolant? and what fuel they run on. So, we do have a coolant, which means our car is water-cooled, which is okay, that's perfect, that's nice, better than being air-cooled. We also have a, 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 a engine that has oil, that has an oil tank, which is good because that means that our car reliably runs on gas or diesel, in our case, diesel due to the engine. But, as you can see, yeah, we're kind of looking, we're kind of low on fuel. Speaking of engines, there are many different types of engines, such as the two-stroke engine, which requires you to put 95% gas and 5% oil for it to be like the most optimal layout. And then you also have an old diesel engine and an old gas engine, and preferably you want to spawn in with an engine that has either old gas or old diesel. So as you saw, we're kind of low on fluids. So let's start filling that up. So right here, let's fill this up, our coolant. What you want to do is you want to come to this jerry can. As you can see, it has water. So we can go here, open that up, grab this, pull it in. And you see that little jerry can icon? That means you can start filling it up. And now we're filling up our coolant. But since it was already almost full, we didn't end up using that much water. So that's nice. Now for the oil. Here's an oil canister or if you need a whole lot of oil you have a 10 liter right here but considering that our car doesn't need oil to run on it's just an oil tank you can put this in and fill it up nice so that's our engine situation taken on care of but our diesel where are we gonna get that well at the bottom in the basement come down around here you have this whole entire big barrel full of diesel so let's go ahead and take it upstairs now you can have to open up the, you know, the gas cap, and then straight from the barrel you can fill it up. I'm gonna wait a little bit. That should be good. Okay. So considering that our car does run on diesel, we can put this right into the back because, well, you know, we'll need it. So let's just drop that in there. Nice. Now each car also spawns with a spare tire, and as you can see. Are looking pretty good. The quality on it is good. And you might be wondering, 
what items are we going to need to take for this trip? Well, first of all, I see some sort of fuel. So we got our diesel up in here, and we also got a tire because sometimes you might crash and lose a tire, and you would not want to be riding around with three tires. Now, obviously, if you do have a gas car, you have some gas right here, although it's not too much. But let's see. What else, you know, should we take? Well, let's go inside of here. And inside the spawn room, where you spawn in, you have some food, which we'll gladly take. And we can actually just... I recommend putting your food near to where you... Oh, near where you drive or, you know, where you sit. As it's, you know, better. You know, you don't have to come out the car, find it amongst all your other stuff. Let's throw this buddy away. So, yeah. I recommend putting food there. It's a pretty good idea. So, that's our food situation covered. Now, if you want to, you could take also one of these tires. These tires are the most meta... Or I like to say meta, but they are one of the better tires in the game, considering that all more powerful engines do very well with these white wall tires. So I recommend taking these ones, because they're pretty good. I see if you are building a bike or plan on finding one in the future, you can take some bike rim, uh, bike tires, but I don't really see a need for it. I say gas. Uh, we do need to take this oil, because our car does require oil, so let's put that in. And just for the sake of being able to simply move around better, let's move the car. So if you want to start the car, you can either press W or you can press I. So I start the car. And then put the handbrake down, the spacebar, and then you can move the car back. And that's pretty good. Now, I recommend when you're going to be stepping out of your car for a long time to turn it off with I again. And then so you're not burning extra fuel. Now let's see. Inside of here, you could take let's say anything and everything. Uh, although I usually tend to not to. You also have the scrubber here. So if you want to you know, clean up your car, you could. But we don't really want to do that right now. Because our car is pretty rusted actually. So yeah, we'll just keep that there in case. This is a cleaning liquid. It's polish. So if we were to have something shiny... Like, for example, we could probably shiny this up. Yep, there you go. See, the car becomes all nice and smooth. So, probably want to take that. You want to make your car, you know, nice and clean. Then you also have this metal rod. Now, this metal rod can attach to any part of the car. For example, I'm going to attach it here. Can I, oh, did not mean to break that. I could also, you know, attach it right here. You can really attach it anywhere you want on your car. And I recommend taking this because you will... Be able to connect it to other cars to tow them and stuff like that you can also grab a paint can to paint your car oh just also pretty cool but since our car is rusty you won't be able to really see it unless we paint this as you can see it's now become more green so i will do and take that i also recommend taking this little flashlight as it Oh, it's a little flashlight. Then also there's a steel brush, which helps you brush off rust. So I can see this is rusty. And boom, now it's not rusty. Do mind that the brush, uh, this, and the scrub do run out of uses. So just know that for the future. Uh, let's see, anything else downstairs? Well, binoculars are also pretty good. I'm not going to lie. They're pretty useful. You know, if you don't, if you can't tell what's something, you know, if there's anything in the distance, you can look like this and be like, hmm, let's see. Looks like there's nothing. Or, you know, boom, there's that watchtower. There's another one right there. So, you know, pretty useful stuff. Also recommend taking it. Let's see, you could also take a spare rim, but I won't. And there's also a hubcap. Then you also have a gun, but I do not recommend taking it because we have something even better. So if you run upstairs... Open this up and crouch under it. You can find this katana right here, which is really good because it one taps all and every, I guess, NPC in this game, which is good. And then you also have your siphoning hose. And this is really useful, especially when you're trying to get liquids from another car into your car. So I'd recommend taking this, it's pretty good. And I'm going to just drop our letter into there for now. 
And so that's really all that you want to take from your house. You also probably want to take some water so you can drink. Um, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm also put this on the inside just so I don't have to worry about that. Let's see. That's really it. Now, around the back, you may have noticed these pellets. Now, these pellets are also pretty damn good. I'm not going to lie. Reason being is that, well, just like that metal bar, you can attach them to anywhere. Here, let me show you. I just get close enough, boom. See, I can attach it, then I can put any item on it, so for now I'll put that. I'm gonna go get the other pallet right here. So these are good, especially when you want to, um, you know, be able to carry your items. Like for example, let's say you have a lot of items, and you just want to expand your bed, trunk bed, you just go like, boom. Nice, now you have more. I'm just gonna put this on top of here. Not too bad. So, nice. Now we have everything we'll need on the trip. We have food. We have gas and oil. We have a spare tire. We have a pretty good wheel. We have expandable storage area. We have a metal bar. And every tool that we'll need. I always recommend doing one more check around seeing, you know, maybe you want to pick up also this metal bar. Um, there's another paint can down there. So I'm going to take this. And that's it. Now we can get going on the long drive. So again, just to remind you, I to start the car, W to give it some RPM so we can start running. Brake, uh, I mean space, to put down the handbrake. And then WASD to drive around. As you can see, this is our gauges. And those numbers right there are how far you have traveled. So as you can see, it's a, it's a whole lot of numbers. The yellow one is the decimal point. That is your fuel. That is your engine temperature. And those are really the two things that you really want to look out for. Because you don't want your engine overheating and you don't want running and you don't want to run out of fuel. Um and yeah, now you can also turn on your headlights. It's pretty cool. As you can see, you have the you know light mode, and then you have the high beams. So if you ever want to feel like driving during the night, it's a good idea. So what you want to do is you want to hop onto the road and just start driving forward. And as you can see, that tire and that pallet has not fallen off because the pallets and baskets and satchels, what they do essentially is they freeze the items in place that are on top of it or in it or, you know, whatever the situation is and depending on what item it is. So it ends up doing this thing called physics lock, which is really useful, especially when you want to carry a whole lot of items. You can just add it onto your car, like put it on top of the roof and use it as a roof rack and not worry about items falling over. Now, due to our vehicle being a truck, I can't really put it onto the roof. I mean, I could, but it would be kind of useless. But yeah. So anyways, you want to just keep on driving. As you can see, it's slowly becoming nighttime, which is okay. Now, there are two, uh, there's two ways you can drive, either during the day or during the night. And each one has pros and cons. Pros of driving during the day, you can see far and wide. But during peak hours of the day, like the afternoon, your engine will tend to overheat. Unless, of course, you have like a bus coolant, then you have to worry about nothing. But driving during the night, its con is that, well, you can't see anything. But during its coldest times, midnight, your engine will be not frozen, but it'll be a whole lot cooler, which is very nice. Now, inside your vehicle, you also have this. I forget what it's called. Um, sun panel thing. So, you know, if you're driving during midday, you can put it up or down. You also have your mirrors, which are all adjustable from within the car, which is really nice. Even that one. As you can see, these lit up. Now, a small tip. If you want to keep on going the right way, just make sure that your telephone posts are on to the right of you. As if they are to the right of you, then that means you're going the right direction. And if they're on the left side of you, then that means you're coming back. So, let's quickly fall asleep. Uh, when you fall asleep, I recommend putting your car to a stop. Turning the ignition off. You'll know it's off when your car stops making noises. That ticking sound, I don't... 
I think that's just engine slowly adding. So if you press V and hold, you will sleep, and as you see, time fast forwards. Now this is also good and bad because let's say if you're emptying out a big fluid container, then that means you can very easily empty it out in just one you know night. But if you have your engine on and you're driving and you fall asleep, you're gonna be burning a whole lot of fuel that you're not using to drive. So be careful with that. Turn off your engine just in case. Because you do wanna save things like your fluids, because you never know. You know, you might have an abundant amount of buildings that you can travel to and get stuff, or you might not. So we're gonna come to our first building, and our first building is a watchtower. So these usually don't offer all too much. As you can see, there's something on the floor over there. I think that might be a rock. We'll see. So turn off the car, or put in brake. Let's see. So that is a... Hmm, I don't know what that is, actually. I think that's a cap that's in the ground. And fun fact, items like this, you can actually dig up if you have the shovel. But since the shovel does not spawn at the house that I know of, sadly we don't, you know, we can't do that. Let's get up here. Oh, so as you can see, items also spawn up here. And let's just go ahead and look at that. I see that's a shipwreck over there, which has oil and gas and diesel barrels, which we'll go check out in a sec. Let's see what's so it's so it's up ahead on the road. Fortunately not not too much. I'm gonna say, kind of unlucky. So let's you know, carefully go down. And let's go over that over to actually not, it's a little too far. Let's keep driving on the road. And as soon as anything interesting pops up, I will be sure to talk to you guys about it. Now, let's say you're driving and you're getting kind of bored. You're just listening to your engine run, listening to the ambient noises, and you're like, damn. If only I could listen to music or radio. Well, lucky for you, you do have a radio inside the car. What you have to do is turn up the volume for it to turn on. Then you'll start hearing static. What's that? Oh, that's true. Okay, so this is to control your stuff, as you can see. There's that radio did, and then you also have AM radio, but I stick to F FM just because it's easier to find channels. See, we're coming upon our second structure over there, which is very nice. So yeah, you got a radio. It's really nice and it's really cool, and I recommend listening to it because um, driving on the road is going to make you go insane. So this is the warehouse, and as you can see, it's pretty huge. So let's park our car. So inside of these buildings, a whole lot of things can spawn, such as car parts, wheels, tires, and flatbeds, I guess. Um, wow. This, oh, whoa. And people. So this is an enemy. I did. You can use your katana, as you can see, to just one-tap them. And, um, yeah, he kind of just dies, well... We'll let him be. Um, so as you can see, inside of here, there's a whole lot of things. For example, engines. It's really nice. Weapons. You also have, you know, parts of cars. Uh, gas, oil, more tires. You can see that one is in pretty good condition, so don't mind. Ooh, this is a very nice engine. And I want to keep. So we can take this tire, for example. Drop it on the inside. It's very nice. Let's see. There's also propane tanks, which are these, which you really don't want to mess with, I'd say. So let's grab this. All right, because we're going to do a little bit of an engine upgrade. Um, perhaps not a full entire engine swap, just a basic one. So here's an AK, which only has one bullet. But yeah, you can find weapons, which are pretty good, and these... AK one taps all enemies, and then you have also food. This is a meat lab, which is OP because it insta fills your food. Let's see what this is. That's a, I think a coolant. Yep. Let's see what else. You got a jerry can full of diesel, which is nice. So let's take that out. I recommend throwing everything that you will be using later. Oh, 
Now this is lucky. This is the, I'm, I believe, the best coolant in the game because it's from the bus. As you can see, you also have this basket. And as you can see, this hood, which spawned inside of it, gets stuck to that. And this tire as well. So we're going to take this. So I can show you what I mean. Can I please get through? Thank you, game. So, yeah, let's do a quick engine upgrade. So we can put that down. We can take this out. As you can see, ours is small and rusty. Originally, I was going to upgrade to this one, which is nice, colorful, and you know, fresh and a lot whole bigger. This one is the biggest, so let's see if we can even put it in. Oh, wow, we... That does not look right. Oh, always remember to close your tabs or your caps so you don't leak stuff. So you can see the coolant is empty. Now you can just open it, grab the coolant that we were just using, and fill the liquid that we had from that coolant into this one so you don't have to worry about moving it from, you know, from a coolant to a jerry can, you know, to a new, another coolant, you can just do that, and kapoom. That's good, so let's put the, oops, let's put the hood back on. And see, it does do that, but not to worry. It's not too bad. The only thing that you should be worrying about is if it's touching the ground, because then you'll be scraping the ground. That's not, that's not too good. As you can see, baskets are pretty cool, because you can do that. You know, let's... Let's see what they got. Oh, I also have this. So this is, oh, these are like little attachments that you can put onto your car to make it a little bit more fun to drive with. You can see, just hangs. Very nice. Well, let's see. What do I want to grab? No, let's, do we want to do an engine swap? Yeah, we'll do an engine swap. Just to show you guys how to do it. So let me just, oof, carry this. So, actually, before we do an engine swap, we'll go over there so we can get gas, because this engine, believe it or not, runs on gas. So, let's just put it in the back. And then, this diesel, let's say, yeah, we can put it right up into here. <laughs> Muffle, guys, one sec. It's a bit finicky. Hard to tell where you're putting the items in. Let's take that. So, yeah. so this is one of many structures that you can find as you can see again spawns in cars uh, weapons food liquids everything you'll ever really need so let's go check out the other structure which is a shipwreck so let's go and drive on over there so i can show you guys what that has because i'm gonna be honest as soon as you find one of those pick up some goodies You'll never again have to worry about fuel or any other type of liquids. Now, talking about liquids, I want to tell you about what alcohol and blood does because you can find it sometimes in canisters. So what alcohol does is it makes you thirsty, but it replenishes your health. So if you are low on health and have a lot of and your water bar your water bar is filled then you can drink it replenish your health which is good because you don't want to die and blood just shut up heals you up which is nice um i do not recommend putting it i don't recommend putting blood or alcohol into your engine as it just simply won't run neither your coolant and neither in your you know fuel so let's just come on down to the big boat as you can see yep there's a big opening in it which we're going to use to our advantage to come in and enter it now before we swap the engine see a little comparison so we're going a little bit uphill we're almost reaching 100 i think the peak for this car is about 120 um as you can see our we are Engine's kind of hot. Not to worry, though. Not to worry. Oh, nice. Perfect. Let's... Let's park this car. And... Let's turn off the car fully. I think that's a good idea. So, we need to... Is we need to come in here. As you can see, yeah. A whole lot of stuff. We need to find 
Some gas. Now some are empty. No big deal. Let's see. Diesel would have been nice if we were going to run on that, but we aren't planning on to. Let's see, empty. Please. Okay, if this place is going to have no gas, I'm going to be really sad. Now I could take the mixture. Oh, that had a lot of oil. Please, game. Okay. Unlucky. Unlucky, unlucky, unlucky. Uh, diesel. Now let's check this one. I think it was empty. Yep. I see that has a big mixture. So you probably don't want to use that. Um, unless you like really needed to, I guess. Could try to, but I don't think your car would get very far. Damn, it looks like we're going to have to use a mixture of oil and gas, which isn't inherently too bad. It's just not optimal for the engine that we have. So let's go and find that oil tank. Or oil barrel, my fault. Or fuel barrel. Here it is. 17 liters of gas and some oil. Now, as long as the majority of your liquid is the liquid that you need, then your car will run fine. For example, let's say you found a barrel that was like 75% oil and 25% gas. You can still put that in your oil tank. It's just not optimal. So in order to drain your car, you want to grab this, you want to stick it in, and then you want to grab the other end and then um, I believe you should be able to just drain it, no? Yeah, there you go. So you can just drain it, and... Okay, now you hear that? That is this bunny's attack call. And that means that you're about to get attacked. So whenever it does that, make sure to look away, or look and find him before you get attacked. So let's quickly train this, and I'll be back with you in a sec. There you go. So now that it's drained, we can grab this and we can just yank it out. And now we want to pick up this. We just want to fuel up our car. Now, obviously, our car is not going to run right now due to the fact that, um, now to put it lightly, we don't have the correct engine. So first up, you want to take your coolant out because it's going to get in the way. You want to take your engine out, drop it. You want to grab your new engine and try and stick it in. You know when you can put it in when that little wrench pops up. You check, yep, it has oil. But just to add in a bit more oil, we can reuse the oil that we had from this tank and fill up this one, which is really, really sweet. See, nice and full. Remember, close that. Let's grab this, stick it in. Nice. And again, you want to make sure that it's not poking into the ground. Okay. Now, the moment of truth is did I remember correct? Oh, I gotta close that too. Now, it should run. Oh, hear that? Oh, that sounds beautiful. As you see, we are puffing blue smoke, and that's because, you know, we're mixing that, which isn't optimal. Now, what you want to do is because this engine is so powerful, you'd preferably want all your wheels to be this, but even if the back two wheels are just this, it's okay. And before you can take off a wheel, you gotta take off the hubcap, which I usually just remove off my car. Then you wanna take off this tire, just drop it away. Now put this, like that, and then boom, nice. And we do the same thing with the other side. Boom, don't need that no more. We can do this. Nice. Looking very good. Well, let's just, just drop this in. Let's see. It's also poop and pee. Now, the reason you want to poop and pee is so you have space to eat and to drink. 
because if not, you will probably die. So let's hop in. Let's turn on the slide so I can show you guys our speed that we're going to be going. Because this engine, it is pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Again, don't worry if it's sticking out. It's not too bad. So, yeah. Now, these lights indicate whether you're given a power, whether it has the correct fluids, and that's just the parking brake. So, let's go give this car a drive. Since we are going downhill, so we're going to go find the road, which I believe was somewhere this way. Now, if you ever do get lost from the road, and you don't know which way you're supposed to go, you can just wait until nighttime when the lights turn on, and then you'll be able to easily find it. For example, yep, there you go. It's flickering, and I can see it. Let's go drive onto it, and let's see our top speed. Now, as you can see, though, easy 160. Oh, want to check out with that? want to watch out for that. Let's turn on our high beams so we don't actually run into a, you know, to anything. As you can see, I slightly start throttling and our car just wants to take off. So let's hop on the road to see our true top speed and stuff like that. We're almost there. Gotta slow down a bit. And just so you guys know, the brakes on these cars, they all suck. So you want to be careful with that. So that's the building that we recently... Oops, I'm spinning up. That we recently explored. So we should start driving. As you can see, yep, we're easily doing 120 uphill while our old car was peaking 80. As you can see, we're picking up even more and more speed. About 125 or 130, I guess, kilometers that we can do is really good for this engine so again let's fall asleep so we don't burn anything extra now if you have lights on in your car don't worry I don't think it burns anything because you do not have car batteries in this game which is not too bad um, so yeah now let's talk about your car so as you can see we have a rusty door let's move all this out of the way so what you want to do to remove rust is first you want to equip this and just start scrubbing away. Correct? That's one layer down. This is our second layer. Boom. Now it's good. Now what you want to grab, I believe is maybe the scrub. Yeah, we'll just grab both. So since our car does not run on diesel anymore, we can just chuck that away. Pick this up. You want to equip this, and then you can start scrubbing. As you can see, that made it smoother, but it's not too smooth yet. You can make it even shinier by grabbing this liquid and spraying it. I don't know. There you go. See, now it's nice, smooth, and clean. You can even see yourself reflecting on it. It's really, really sweet. So, let's talk about parts. So, some parts of the car, as you can see, are rusted. Now, what it means if you have rusted parts is that if you end up in a crash, they will fall off. They have a higher chance of falling off. So, for example, this wheel right now has a higher chance of falling off rather than this one. As you can see, because that rim is rusted. Well, this one is rusted, but it's, you know, not as rusted as this one. Same with the bumper. If I were to crash into a light post right now, this would, I would say, like, 95% chance would fall off. Same with that hubcap, and same with this tire. Now, for car doors and well, mirrors, even that one, and I think really anything else inside the car, you can make less rusty with the method that I did show you, and you know your uh, your things won't fall off as often, which is good. But for your things such as tire, you cannot clean them. Oops. You cannot clean them. I, you know, let's see, I'm doing like only the tire right there. Right? I'm going to scrub. Oh, that's the car. As you can see, I'm scrubbing it. I'm scrubbing it. I'm scrubbing it. It's not doing it. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to find better quality tires. Like this one that we did find. 
so your car has better grip and stability and won't spin out as much. Man, get out of here. Now, in the, in the wild, you're also going to be able to find food, which we did find some, like that one meat slab. And the meat slab is the best type of food. In, I mean, and in general, the meat is the best type of food in this game, as, as you saw me eat recently. It fills you up instantly, where this will fill you up somewhat, but not too much. Water is really the only thing that you can drink. Good drink, again, blood and alcohol, but alcohol makes you more thirsty. So, you know, not ideal. Let's again, or puff and blue smoke, not too much. And so that's really it for this video, guys. That's all you have to do. As simple as that. You have to find better parts, put them in your car, find better cars, put your stuff into them. Just keep driving. Keep driving forward. You know, yeah, you're going to have hills that you're going to have to overcome, which are challenging. And you're going to want to feel like you're going to want to give up. Well, remember what Nick A30 said. Amazing. And don't give up and don't back down or something like that. Five kilometers, 5,000 kilometers is a lot. But it's not the end. It's the journey. The amount of fun places that you're going to visit, the amount of memories that you're going to make along the journey is, is really good, and I recommend playing this game, and I recommend trying to, you know, make that card look cool, and stuff like that, and yeah. So I hope you guys did enjoy this simple little video. You know, hopefully this video taught you something new, hopefully made you want to check out, check this game out, as it is pretty damn cool, and uh, yeah, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.